Uh, let's go to this one. This one's a pretty quick. This is going to be a really quick one. Uh, this is sort of an update to the a lot of the critical race theory stuff that I've done. And uh, boy, howdy, I can't wait for the comments on this video because you know there's going to be a bunch of shitheads that'll show that'll show up uh, and and throw down some some comments justifying fucking uh, ignoring the true history of America. Uh, that 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 that's going to be fun. Uh, but I'm going to share this. This is this is about a maybe a, just about a week old. Uh, but I, but I think it, again, it kind of starts debunking some of the things that people say in the comment sections. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear it. And uh, if you can't leave a comment that you can't hear it, here we go. That's a fucking commercial. Son of a bitch. Ugh, I'm going to talk over this commercial because you know what? Fuck you. I don't need it. I didn't, I didn't ask for a goddamn commercial to be played on my live stream. That is not what I wanted. Earlier today, go. NWA educators got together to rally for honest history. This comes as lawmakers in multiple states attempt to pass legislation that would ban schools from teaching concepts like racism and sexism. The protesters say they're concerned after they heard that the Arkansas Secretary of Education wanted to make changes to the state's curriculum in response to those critics. We didn't know anything about the Tulsa massacre. We didn't know about the Elaine massacre here in Arkansas back in 1919. We didn't know about the Rosewood massacre back in, in, in Florida in 1923. But how great of a country are we if those mistakes aren't being taught, much less acknowledged? Well, the rally was purposely held at a former whites-only migrant farmer camp in Springdale. That's on Applegate Road. A few of the original buildings are still there. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, that was gross. Uh, so there you go. Ah. I had to get out of that website real quick. Uh, <laughs> sorry if you guys got the, a little bit of that last one. So there you go. You know, teachers want to teach the truth. That's what they want to do. Um, some of the stuff that he mentioned, the Elaine massacre, the, the massacre in Florida, I didn't know about. So it's some stuff that now I have to learn and and teach myself as well. Uh, I didn't know about Tulsa. Uh, I'd, I'd heard about some of that stuff. I'd, I'd, I'd known about the existence of Black Wall Street. Uh, but what what is what does that show, right? Uh, one of the big proponents uh, for that's that's a that's a kind of a pro capitalist argument, using using uh, sort of the progress we've made through race is well we have a lot of billionaires, and millionaires who are black. Isn't that cool? No, it isn't cool. I don't want to see more billionaires. I don't want to see more millionaires in this, regardless of what their skin color is. Black Wall Street, when you look at Tulsa, what that really teaches us is that there was no real um, intention for America to include black people in this system. And so black people found a way to be a part of this system. And, and, and the rich white people didn't want that. So what did they do? Over a rumor, they galvanized a bunch of poor white people and they said, those people have your money. Not no, we're trying to give you more money and they're getting in the way of it. And they sowed the divide and they went and burnt this fucking prosperous black community down. For what? And and this is stuff that they don't want to teach to kids. Why? Because it will show that capitalism does not want black people to be involved in their system. Especially if they do it uh, in, in a... Uh, in a way that's not approved by capitalists. If it's outside the paradigm of what capitalists say it should be. That's what it was. To say it doesn't exist, I mean, it's a major falsehood. Just because, you know, and, and this is the thing, is that people want to people get credit for um, b b just b basic human rights. Right. Uh, I have people that make the argument. I have friends that make the argument of, well, things are better. You know, black people and white people can sit in the same restaurant together. Oh, good. Are we giving points for some shit that should have been normalized from the get go? That's breadcrumbing. That's what it's called. Uh, in, in psychology, breadcrumbing is is the term that's used when abusers gaslight they're victims. That's kind of what that is. It's like when people say, well, Joe Biden's not as bad as Trump. Oh, 
What an achievement. I have fungus on my toe that's not as bad as Trump. Honestly, the fungus on my toe, I don't have fungus on my toe. Just I'm using that as a argument. Uh, but if I did have fungus on my toe, it would be better than Trump and Biden uh, because that fungus uh, never started a war that uh, it fucking didn't need to. But, it, but it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous for you to say. And then, you know, for the people to say that they're not going to be able to comprehend it is also ridiculous. That shows that, that you know, for, again, it's it's this, it's this contradiction to American exceptionalism. Because if you are going to sit there and say that America is the most exceptional country in the whole fucking world, but all of a sudden your kids can't handle the truth, is insanity. And it doesn't fucking make sense. And again, most of these kids are going through racism in their schools because perhaps the parents of some of their other uh, some of their classmates are racist and they've indoctrinated them into the system. And there's nothing in, in their education system that's pulling them out. It's not teaching them critical thinking. So they can experience racism, but they can't learn about it. They can experience sexism, but they can't learn about it. It's an it's a it's a fallacy. It doesn't make sense. And then there are people that will straight up deny it. This never happened. Prove it. All you need to do is take the fucking blinders off your head and you can see the racism, the sexism, the oppression of, of minority communities in this country. Just take the blinders off. It's not that hard. There are, and, and there are educators fighting for this now. There are educators on the street in a southern state, which uh, Arkansas, again, is another state that wants to get rid of this sort of stuff. They want to control education, and they're openly saying that they want to indoctrinate kids with, with falsehoods and propaganda. That's what this is. This is a confession. Texas doing it. Texas wanting to get rid of MLK, Civil War, the, uh, the, the women's suffrage movement is just them confessing, coming out outright and very boldly saying that they want to indoctrinate kids with with propaganda that is going to make them good, good little workers for capitalism so that so that we don't see people out on the streets. So that you don't learn what activism and organi organizing is. So good. I'm glad these these teachers are pushing back, and I and I hope to see uh, a lot more of that, a lot more of that. I would I would I would love to see teachers from other states, uh, you know, launch some solidarity strikes with those with with the Arkansas teachers. We need a total revision of how history is taught in schools and what history is taught in schools. Because it is a very Anglo-Saxon, white version of history. And you can sit there and say, well, history is taught by the winners. Yeah. And winners tend to fucking embellish and lie. Have you, have you heard somebody talk about a fight they were in? And this is, this is, it's, this is not like an over-the-top analogy, considering most of American history has been steeped in warfare, both domestically and internationally. We have been we're constantly at war in this country. That's why we have a war economy. Our economy runs on constantly waging wars in parts of the world that we don't need to be in so we can steal other people's resources. That's how this country was fucking formed. And we just took it to do it on a global scale. That's why it's 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 taught that way. So all of that shit can be justified. That's why we have that. Let's look at your comments real quick. Uh, Aiden says that's some Steven Pinker bullshit. Uh, which which statement? Uh, I've I've heard so, there's some stuff that Steven Pinker says, and I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, I I think you're on the money. And then there's some stuff that he said where I'm like, where the fuck does this come from? Right? I think when you're uh, Steven Pinker, Jordan Peterson, these are people that when you just start learning about like so uh, sociology and psychology, basic intro level stuff they're uh they're they're good for right uh the oh it's the it's it's better now kind of crap yeah you know i i use that as an argument um when ah, fucking years ago uh talking about the about like media manipulation 
uh, and the police brutality crisis and stuff. Like I, 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 I use that as sort of the, 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 the jumping off point to, to make my argument. And yes, in, in certain, in certain cases, things are better, but in a lot of cases they're not just because a couple things got incrementally better. Doesn't mean that there is, there isn't vast amounts of injustices across the world. Right. And I, and I agree with you it, it, that, that notion, I, I, again, on a, basic rudimentary introductory level you can use this as an argument and talk about it but then once you start delving into it you realize that just because a couple things are better doesn't mean that they the world isn't still kind of dealing with the same problems it was dealing with a hundred years ago look at the way unions are being treated look at the way fucking strikers are being treated in this country look at the way black lives matter protesters are being treated in this country and then go back 100 years, look at the, the Battle for Blair Mountain, look at Seattle 1919, look at Winnipeg 1919, look at all of the general strikes in 1934, look at what happened in the 20s. They're kind of identical. So yeah, it, some things are better. I mean, we're able to communicate through, I, I'm, I'm six, seven hours away from Aiden, and I can still talk to him. That's really cool. Does that mean that racism is over? Does that mean that sexism is over? Absolutely not. And in the case of technology, since I, I brought that up, but in the case of technology, technology is now being used more or less to oppress more people. Look at the problems we're having with censorship. Look at the problems we're having with people getting demonetized. That's economic censorship. So I agree with you, a a Aiden. You know, it's it, it, th those folks, those social science, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, Pink Pinker's a sociologist. I know Jordan Peterson claims that he's a psychologist. They're all fine for basic surface level introductory stuff. For a 14-year-old to say, hey, you know, you, you, your, your mind might be less cluttered if your room is less cluttered, if the environment you're working in is less less cluttered great introductory psychological stuff for 14 year olds to learn but now you have to build off of that and usually when you build off of that the the more individualistic person will tell you to go inward where the less individualistic person would say yes you need time to take for yourself and do what's good for you but you should also learn other people's perspectives and be able to respect other people's boundaries and stuff like that too and learn how what other people's experiences are and again, that's where the teachers come back in to teach the true history of this country. Good point, Aiden. Holly points out that it's an important con conversation and information. I appreciate that. Thank, uh, yeah, I agree with that. That's exactly what this is. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates 
all over the place. So, uh, and I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out new Forkful of Noodles content as well. Uh, so don't worry. Those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is, is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de- uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events uh, You know when, when I come through your town. So... Uh, Be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.